Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. We're going to be creating an Overwatch Winston Shield. So we're going to recreate this. So I saw a tutorial on YouTube and I thought it was pretty interesting where this, uh, this uh, what's his name? The Unrealist recreates Winston Shields in Unreal 4 and he goes step by step on how to do it in Unreal. But so I really wanted to mute that. Uh, I really wanted to show you guys how to kind of mimic that look, but we're gonna do it in Maya using the Arnold shaders. So it's pretty fun. I recommend I'll leave the link below so you guys can look at his Unreal stuff. But uh, I just wanted to like recreate this in on uh, in Maya. So the Winston Shield's pretty interesting. So as you can see, it's got a little bit of a white outline. And then it's got this uh, uh, blue color, and then it's got this grid pattern that kind of goes down in an animated way. So I'm gonna try to mimic this, but in Arnold. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing, of course, is uh, we're gonna need a sphere. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, and just because there's supposed to be floor, I'm gonna create a plane. And I'm gonna create a cube just to give it some sort of depth so we can see through it and we can, whoops, let me grab this cube here, scale it up and maybe push it back a little bit. I don't want it floating, so something maybe like that. All right, looks good. Grab everything and let's go ahead, center the pivot, delete the transformations and freeze, freeze transformations and delete the history, cool. So the first thing we're going to do is assign a color to it. I'm going to go right click, assign a new material, and let's go to Arnold's and select an AI standard surface. Here we are. And then let's change this to a cool blue. It's up to you what type of color blue you want. Maybe something like so. Uh, this is a transparent object, so let's go to the shape. Let's scroll up. I have everything open. Let's collapse all of this. And under Arnold, right, so everything's... So everything's collapsed like this. Let's go to Arnold and just turn off opaque just to make sure that Maya understands that this is gonna be a transparent object. Let's go back to here and let's relabel things. This is gonna be my blue shield. Crank it up to one, go down to my geometry and let's go ahead and reduce the opacity. Let's see what we have so far. We have nothing, why? Because there's no lights. Well, let's go to Arnold, lights, physical sky, something really fast. We don't need anything fancy, there we go. Okay, um, let's go back to our dome here. Let's go back to our blue AI standard. Let's make this a little bit uh, more solid and let's turn off our specularity because we really don't need that specularity. And then finally, we're gonna go to our emission and just crank up that value. Now, right now the emission color is white. So let's change it to our fancy blue. And now we're getting a little bit more of that power. So if I increase it even more, you can see that it still keeps a transparency, but at least it's looking like it's glowing. It's awesome om omissions. So we can always decrease this if you want to. So we can control our opacity here, like so. Solid, so on and so forth. All right, now that we have our basic shield, let's zoom in so we can get a better look. Cool, it's getting a little crowded and I do want to start working on my shader. So up here at the top, I'm going to go to texturing. Again, you can create your own workspace at a different tutorial that I've created in the past. So feel free to uh, kind of look at a previous tutorial and I'll leave the link below if you want to make your own workspace. Okay, so here's our shield. Here is our object. Let's select our object here and we click on this, which is going to show us a shader that's attached. Cool. And now we're gonna need an AI mix shader because we're gonna need to mix two shaders together. So let's hit tab on our keyboard and hit AI mix. There it is, AI mix shader. And let's hit tab again and create another standard. Here's our AI standard surface, perfect, another one. This one is going to be white because it's gonna cause that white outline. So let's go ahead and crank this up to one. Let's remove the specularity because we don't need it and let's increase the emission weight. Nice, I think we don't need it to be transparent. Okay, so now that we have this, let's relabel. All right, white outline. Cool, so we have our blue, we have our white outline and let's mix them together. Let's grab the out color, plug it into shader one. Let's grab the out color of our white outline and plug it into shader two and let's see uh, our results, which um, I'm not sure if you noticed. 
I really need to assign it. So let's middle mouse and drag this onto the sphere. And now we have a mix of the two shaders together. So if I go to the left, I've got a mix shader of zero. If I go to the right, I get a mix shader of one for the white. So right now it's at halfway. So how do we control this? Well, we're gonna use a, a facing ratio. So activate that and we're gonna grab the out color and plug it into the mix. The facing ratio, see the effect? gives you a gradient based on the camera. So whatever's closer gets a type of gradient and then as it pulls back, it starts to disappear. If you wanna see what it looks like, you click on this little guy right here. So you can see the gradient. Um, let's fix this a little bit. We wanna get a sharper edge. It might be easier to see. So you can see how I can control this a little bit. Right. You can see the edge and how it, it goes out, but I want to invert it. Lucky for us, there's an invert right here. And now we're getting the effect that we want. So let's go ahead and bring this back, the bias. And really we just want is a thin outline. So that's very nice. And what's cool is that no matter where the camera is point, pointing to, this white outline will always be facing it. All right, we're getting a really neat effect. Let me change my color just a little bit. There you go, that looks better. All right, so, so far so good. I might wanna increase my emission even more, maybe 100% for the blue. Okay, it's coming along. We can make this line thinner if we want to, but you know, artist choice. I'm gonna make it just a tiny little bit thinner. Okay, so now that we have this, let's move on. Now we got to figure out how to create that interesting little uh, gradient that goes up and down, right? So if you watch this, as it starts to pulse down, there's this interesting bloop kind of look. So we want to try to bring that in. Let's go back into this. So what we want is our blue to have a texture uh, affecting it. So what we're going to do is uh, hit tab and we're going to hit file type in file and you'll see that we what we want is to bring in the file texture so let's bring that in and it comes with a placement node and what we're going to do is go into our little folder here and look for this honeycomb mask now i have to warn you guys that i did download this from this gentleman so please make sure that you give him credit so if you scroll down in his uh, video which you can find below in my comments uh, it tells you how to download this and it's for free so he's awesome or you can create this honeycomb texture on your own up so it's completely up to you but I just want to make sure I give him credit so thank you very much all right let's select this and now we have uh, this object and what we're gonna do is connect it to our opacity so let's grab out out color and plug it into our opacity there we go. So now we have this interesting effect. Not exactly what we're looking for, but at least it's working. Let's go to our placement node over here to the left. Click on placement node and let's increase this. It's up to you what you want to do. You can do 20 by 20 and we're getting a uh, that cool honeycomb effect. Um, I think I'm going to stretch it a little bit different 20 by 10 so that it looks a little bit more like a honeycomb. That actually looks kind of neat. If you want it to be more dramatic, maybe 30 by 20 or maybe by 10. That actually looks really nice. All right, so I'm really happy with this, but um, it's a little bit too transparent. So I'm gonna go into my file here, scroll down to my color balance, and I'm gonna mess around with my color offset, which is going to bring back some of that color. So instead of being pure black, I can use this to kind of get that color back so it's not so uh, transparent. All right, it's looking really nice. So far, so good. Okay, so next, how do we get this to animate? The next thing I want to do is take a look at this and uh, collapse things. I'm going to hit one here. I'm going to hit one just because it's getting a little busy. And what I want is to be able to uh, to use um, a gradient to be able to control this a little bit. The only way I can think of doing this because there's already two opacity nodes attached, I'm going to use what's called an AI mix shader again. I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit. And I am going to grab, again, I need more space. So I'm gonna just kind of start moving things around. I'm gonna grab this out color and plug it into my mix one. 
And then I am going to stop this because it's going to crash out color and grab it here so it's no longer connected. And it's not going to have any, it's going to have this type of effect. Again, this is a 50 50. So if I go to the one, I get the, or to the zero, I get 100%. And then because there's nothing plugged in shader two, it doesn't know where to go. So just leave it like this. Okay. Now, another thing cool about the shield is that it does have a little bit of a blue and then it kind of is more transparent in the center and then it's a little bit more blue at the edges so that's what exactly what we're going to do um, i'm going to take this blue ai standard i'm going to go to edit and i'm going to duplicate without the network so it's just blue i'm going to grab it and plug it in here so now again if i grab my mix shader it will be uh well, this is transparent, so let's make sure that all my colors are okay. And my emissions are okay. And let's grab my geometry and just kind of bring it back, maybe somewhere in the middle, like so. Okay, perfect. The reason why the uh, transparency went to zero is because when you disconnect a file from an opacity, which is what I did when I duplicated it, it, uh, it just reverted to a zero. Okay, so now we have this going back to the shader. I want kind of like a mix of this. We're gonna um, hit file. So let's grab file again, just like what we did before, grab the texture. And again, he actually has a, uh, a little file for us called scanline. So we're gonna use that. So now I have a file with a scanline. I'm gonna scoot this over and I'm gonna use this out color to drive my mix. That's gonna, it's not gonna let me, so I'm gonna hit my plus sign here, grab the R and plug it in. There we go. Now it's a little hard to see where the ramp is located. So let's click on this guy right here to see where the ramp is. So here's the mix shader. This is the ramp and notice that we really can't see it. So let's play around with our, okay. So Maya crashed and uh, that's just what happens sometimes. So let's see, I'm pretty sure I caught up with where I was at. So let me press play. Okay. So here we are with the mix shader and um, I'm going to change this. I don't think that's correct. Let me go back here and maybe change this to 10. There we go. Cool. Okay. So here we are trying to figure out where is this little ramp. As you can see, we really can't see it. So what we want to be able to do is manipulate it in a way that we will be able to uh, look at it. So if I take these values and maybe change it into uh, halfway 0.5, There it goes. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our placement node and let's increase this by three so we can take a look at it. And you can see that we are seeing the line right here and uh, along the way. So maybe if I increase it by five, you might see it a little bit more. There it is. So it, we're getting the effect that we want, but we actually want to reverse it. So let's grab our texture here, our file. And let's invert it. So if you go scroll down, if you go to effects, there's something called invert. Go ahead and click on that. And just to make sure everything's working well, just make sure alpha under color balance, alpha luminous is active. So now what we're getting is this effect of we're seeing that blue shader underneath and then we're seeing this as well. But the blue shader is a little strong. So let's go back into our the other blue shader, which is this one. And... Um, and we might want to change the color just a little bit so we can compare it to uh, to the other ones, just a little bit darker. And then I'm going to go to geometry and just make it a little bit more transparent. So the effect is going to be that it looks like the shield is active and then we have uh, this grid. There's a couple of things I can tweak, but let's go ahead and keep moving forward. The next thing I want to do is kind of get that shield to be a little bit transparent in the center and out. So we're going to be using the AI facing ratio. All right, so here it is. We're gonna drive our opacity with it. So grab the out value and plug it into the opacity. And if we can't read it, then we'll just plug it to the R, G, and B. There we go. So now the ratio is working. Let's invert it. And now we're getting this really cool effect where it's somewhat transparent at the front. And then as it starts to fall back, it really, gives it that effect. So I'm going to push this a little bit more 
kind of soften the, make that edge less dramatic and just kind of soften it a little bit just so we can get the nice effect. Cool. We're getting that cool shield looking thing. All right, it's coming along safe before Maya crashes again. All right, let's grab this placement note. I don't need it to be five, maybe a two will work. There we go. Um, if you feel like this uh, this grid's too big, we can always change the repeat UVs. So don't forget, you can always go back into the honeycomb, go to the t placement node and maybe just change this to, let's say uh, 2010 if you want that or keep it at 30 10 depending on what your what you would like to do 10 15 there's a lot of kind of looks that you can go for all right so how do we say uh animate this so uh it's been driven by the by this guy right here the scan lines right so that's what's driving it so we need to just figure out how to animate this so that it moves up and down so if i increase my value here So this is X and this is Y and I hit control and I middle mouse and drag over these values. You'll see that I can get kind of like a, I can actually animate this. It's a really neat effect. So I might go back to my hunt. Okay. I keep changing my mind. I know it's just like, just trying to get it more aesthetic looking. So let's go back and I'm going to change this to 40, oops, 40, 20, maybe 40. 15. Okay. I like that better. All right, going back. So we're going to go back to the scan line. We're going to go back to the placement node. And what I want to animate is this portion right here. So let's, if I hold down control and middle mouse, you can see the effect, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, what else can I do? Maybe bring back that white outline a little bit more. So again, that's controlled by the facing ratio here. I just want to bring it in a little bit just so I can really see it. Cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, keyframe this. I'm going to animate this. So starting at frame one, I'm going to start off at zero. Right click, set key. And then maybe after 25 frames, which is about a second. I'm going to control click until it hits around the same area. put in a one and then set key. So if we look at it, it's going to start at here and then it's going to start to move down until it hits frame 25 and then it's going to stop, right? And then after that, it doesn't move. So I need this to continuously repeat. Now you could go in and start keyframing everything, but that's going to take forever. So this is going to be the plus side of Academic Phoenix Plus. I'm going to show you guys how to create a repeating cycle animation because it can it's a, uh, it's, it's a lot of work if you're trying to animate everything. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, show you how to do a repeating cycle. All right. So to do that, we are going to select our scan line, make sure we've got this selected by clicking on the output. And over here we have something called windows animation editors, graph editor, and the graph editor is the key shows you basically the way the animation flies or flows is that it goes from frame one, which is here to frame 25. And this is the animation to get it to work. You need to select all of this and we're going to go to curves, pre infinity cycle, and then curves, post infinity cycle. So what that means is that no matter where I'm at, it's going, the animation is going to continue in that particular, uh, animation. So if I press play, and, and Arnold's going to do its best to kind of keep up. You can see that the animation continues, which is a, but you'll also notice that it kind of slows down a little bit because this does have in and outs. Uh, if you guys know anything about animation, uh, if you want to straighten it out, this will be a linear animation. So there is no ease and outs. It's going to make it look a little bit more robotic, which is kind of, that's kind of what we want. Um, if you want to see the, if you want to view the, uh, cycles, you go to view and you go to infinity, make sure that's on and you can see the animation. So there we go. That is how I can create Winston's shield. Now it's, an it does animate, which is pretty sweet. You can always uh, go in and tweak whatever you want to tweak, but uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to get this to work. Um, if you don't want it to cast shadows or anything, 
then you're just going to have to go into the render the shape of your sphere in this case and just say do not cast shadows and then it will turn off the shadows. The one thing that I do want to throw out there for you guys, especially the ones who likes creating shaders and things like that. Uh, one of the cool things about this, sh this shield is that when it hits a uh, um, another piece of geometry, it outlines that geometry and I can't for the life of me figure that out. So that's the one thing that's missing on this piece is that uh, if I try to rotate my sphere and you see where it's intersecting that cube, I can't get it to outline that. But if somebody knows how to do it, please share and comment below because I would love to learn how to do that. Uh, well, I hope that was helpful, helpful, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Hopefully that was at least, uh, you, you know, uh, you learned a great deal. If you found this helpful, please make sure to share with your friends and everybody, especially for anybody that might be interested. So again, we're getting pretty complicated shaders here. We have, uh, two mixed shaders and they're all being driven by different, uh, black and white images. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty amazing what we can create. Uh, and what's fun is that this type of nodes translates into other things like Unity and Unreal. So it's just about learning the, you know, the node language. Thank you again for listening. I really appreciate it. Please uh, feel free to send me a message uh, below or uh, you can always check out academicphoenixplus.com for my newsletter and updates. And I have a Facebook community if you guys want to chat there as well, Instagram and everything else. So thank you again. I will see you in the next tutorial.